G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy and the Eagles Corner. Uh, context for this video is uh, I am in sunny Greece right now. And when I say I'm in sunny Greece, I mean I've recorded this about a week before you're actually watching it. And I've woken up and realized my flight is four hours earlier than I thought it was. So I'm going to give you an intentionally concise season review for the West Coast Eagles uh, in lieu of being here to do an actual video this week. So today, in today's video, I am going to uh, have the unenviable task of trying to pick apart the season that was 2023. It was the... I would say the worst season uh, in our history. Obviously, last year we had less wins and similar percentage. But in terms of like the, the context, I know that we had bad injuries, arguably worse this season than last. The, the shame of some of those losses and in isolation, I think, really takes the cake. There was a point at which I was wondering, you know, is this, is this time really as bad as 2008? I think that was the other worst team I've ever seen us put out. Uh, obviously, 2010, we won the wooden spoon, but I felt like we were more competitive week to week. 2008 has some real fart efforts in that season. But no, no, this season far and away took the cake. Before I crack in with the rest of the video, guys, uh, if you have been enjoying the Eagles content this year, it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to grow this channel, uh, you know, while I can before the, the season ends and really try and finish the season on a on a good note in terms of the YouTube performance and the support around uh, the channel in general, uh, but particularly Eagles Corner has been fantastic. So I really appreciate it. But if you uh, haven't subscribed yet and you are enjoying the content, I would much appreciate it if you did hit subscribe and you can be rest assured there will be plenty of more Eagles content and general AFL content, uh, not only this year, but in the years to come. So let's dissect this season. Preseason expectations were probably similar to 22. Uh, 21, the end of 21, um, we had a bad injury list, admittedly, and you could start to see the rot coming with this football club. The way we were playing, the game style was stale, the players looked devoid of confidence. We had two 90 plus point losses, both at GMHBA Stadium that year. We lost to North Melbourne at home. We had beaten Richmond before the bye, and it was the very next game after that. The Western Bulldogs beat us by about 11 goals in Perth in a game we were, I can't remember if we were favorites, but we were at home. We had every chance of winning that game. And, and since then, we have not been the same club. Since that Josh Kennedy kick to sink Richmond, you know, two minutes to go in the game, one of the best wins I've ever witnessed in person. Since then, the arse has fallen out of this club. Um, and, you know, 22, I think the expectation was, okay, rejuvenated list, get some young talent onto the list. And then we got decimated by injury. And we kind of gave us a little bit of a bit of a mulligan, to be honest. Like the, the way the, the season fell apart last year was kind of understandable. You know, we, we needed to transition the list in terms of demographics. And we needed to adapt to new game style with a list that wasn't equipped to play a new, faster game style. You know, like we've got tons of players that are really good aerial uh, and not so much good ground level contested players and then we tried to adapt to a style that um, is more modern but we didn't quite have the cattle yet so like I, I can excuse 2022 um, fairly decently like I, uh, maybe it's just easy to say that now because 23 got worse but going into this year my logic was I made a video at the start of the, at the year which people like to remind me uh, the Eagles will be better than you think in 2023 but that was largely predicated on us having you know a decent injury list not even a good injury list but something resembling normal and it was predicated on Nick Nat being back in the team because I do think he makes that much difference you know we were one of the worst teams for being scored against from stoppage this year Nick Nat is one of the best stoppage players I've ever seen would he win us enough games to potentially push for finals no I don't think I even suggested that in the video I could be wrong but he would have mitigated a lot of how bad this season got I have no doubt about that and that's just one player yeah let alone yeah Elliot Yo being fully fit obviously we had to push him to the back line this year to um you know protect his body and kind of also help with the avalanche of inside 50s that was coming in Tom Barras missed a lot of football after being our best player last year so I, I don't really uh blame myself too much for not seeing the injury crisis is coming because you know from round three it was probably worse than last year you save for the COVID isolations early in the year last year um, you can't control that but round one happens and we lose to North Melbourne and uh, obviously I'm not happy to lose that game but you remember we if we played quite well by our standards you know certainly by the the standards set throughout the rest of the year that round one loss we looked like a half decent competitive side and we, I think it was really only like the third quarter or like a quarter and a half where we just stopped playing and I remember being filthy about that but then we came back hard, we nearly won the game, and uh, we yeah we would lose by five points in the end. But, you know, North were playing to an okay standard then. And when I say okay, I mean just far exceeding what they're currently putting out. And then they beat Fremantle on the next week, and we beat GWS in um, in a game where, you know, Waterman looks like he's he's come of age. Jamie Cripps returns to arguably career best form this year. We'll talk about him later. But they kick four goals each. The team plays a lot more of a aggressive, fast-moving, modern style. And uh, suddenly, you know, we have faith again. And then the derby happens and, you know, we're competitive in that game and arguably a good chance to win it. 
you know, we'll never really know because, uh, you know, in the third term, when all the injuries were starting to take its toll, I think we lost Shuey, we lost Withered into concussion. Chester did an MCL and then played out the second half. Liam Ryan, uh, Jeremy McGovern. I can't remember the other two, but I know there were seven injuries that came from that game. One of them might have been SPS. So obviously, you know, uh, Fremantle playing against about 15 fit players. They kick like the last seven goals of the game and then someone does a backflip because he thinks he's a mad dog. But, you know, from then on, it, it, it kind of really got worse. I'm just looking at the fixture now to help me with this video. I remember thinking we played okay against Melbourne in round four, considering the injuries. We lost by 11 goals. We lost to Geelong by, you know, nine goals in Adelaide. And then we lost to Port Adelaide by seven goals. And I do remember we made a pretty good comebacks in, in at least the Geelong game. And I think the Port game, we were relatively competitive. But I think round seven, I remember being in New York City when this game happened. I was really, really drunk from the night before. And I woke up and saw we lost by 100 points. And that's, uh, that was really the start of the end end of this season. As followed by a decent performance against the G against the Richmond side we thought were better than they were actually at the time. We lost by 70 points at home to the Gold Coast who ended up finishing in the bottom four but round 10 is really where standard of this year really dropped from being bad to just beyond pathetic. We played the uh, wooden spoon favorite at the time Hawthorne who were 18th spot. We were playing him in Tassie Finally, we're playing against a team, you know, similar in certainly season expectation and, and probably like experience as well because we had a lot of outs. I think we had no Barras or McGovern that game. I think uh, Edwards and Bazo were leading the back line that game and we lost, yeah, 142 to 26. I'm sure you'll remember, but that is the point uh, at which, you know, the Carlton loss was bad, but this was truly pathetic couple of half decent losses you know but by, by this point in the season round 11 you know a 50 point loss is kind of just like okay that's not too bad we had a really good purple patch against Collingwood I remember that and then the injuries really took a hold of us going into the Adelaide game and um, you know Rhett Bazo being on his own as the only key defender in that game that didn't help uh, I mean that game text kicked 10 didn't he and uh, yeah I kind of gave us a little bit of a mulligan for that because of the injury situation bearing in mind I didn't watch the game but you know I, it was clear even just just watching the highlights how easily Adelaide was getting the ball out of the center of the ground. Uh, then following that Adelaide game was the Sydney game, which I don't need to remind you of, but this is just setting the tone for the year. And then the following week against the Saints, you know, we were leading the game, what, like 49 to 18 at one point. So a, a good response, but ultimately not good enough to win the game. And then I remember thinking we were past the worst of it. You know, we were solid against Richmond. Um, I don't remember the Brisbane game too well because I was in Croatia. The Carlton game we had one pathetic quarter and then we won the second half. So we were starting to creep back into being just a bad side, not a pathetic side. We beat North Melbourne. I remember not being that impressed. But the following week, this is where the season actually started to have a glimmer of hope for me. And we started to see real evidence of growth, particularly with some of the young players. And that was when we lost to Essendon by one point. You know, this was the part of the season where, you know, it was really obvious to me Elijah Hewitt was going to be an absolute star. I think it was the St Kilda game in particular. He had two goals in that game, I think. He had that set shot was his first. And then he did that great stoppage uh, run from behind and snap it over his shoulder goal. But I think if you isolate the last five weeks of the season, you know, a win over North, a one-point loss over Essendon. Then the Derby happens, and we just look like we've reverted to the exact same West Coast Eagles side. Then we beat the Bulldogs, and finally, against Adelaide, like I covered last week, I think uh, we put in a pretty respectable performance for three quarters. So that's the narrative of this season. It's been um, promising, and then bad, and then terrible, and then good, and then terrible, and then a good finish to the year, I would argue. So the way I kind of reflect on 2023 is, yes, the worst was the absolute worst. The worst is football club has ever seen and arguably probably second only to Melbourne uh, obviously referring to the Mark Neild and Dean Bailey days you could argue it's worse I don't really remember to be honest but it doesn't matter the lowest ever the club but the difference between this year and last year on the plus side is that I think the positives are much stronger than they were last year last year we were kind of bereft of development of you know young guns I like I'm, I'm sure we got a bit of exposure into Hoff and Bazo and uh, then we saw a bit of Jai Cully at the end of the year but we didn't really have any anything to get excited about to be honest other than those guys and then other than you know a strong draft hand which we're probably going to have for the next few years uh, there wasn't a lot of growth I thought out of 22 but I do think you know as bad as this year got there was growth we saw some serious development and I think the the, the part of our list that is the weakest and, and that's the, the part of the list that we sort of neglected you know we didn't take a first round pick between 2014 or oh, we took one at we only took a couple of first round picks between 2014 and 2021, I think. Let's do that right. So 2015, we didn't. 16, Venables. 17, Brander. 18, no. 
19 no, 20 no, 21 Chesser. So that is the age bracket now that that's become like 21 to 24, where that part of the list has been completely bereft of anything for a while. You know, I think Venables, he was a premiership player, obviously really unfortunate what happened with him. Brander didn't make it. So we're 0 from 2 in first round. It's between Duggan and Chesser. But the long-winded point I'm making here is that uh, I think we saw growth from that part of the list regardless. And I'll isolate some names. Oscar Allen, obviously. He still counts as that mid-tier. We've known he's a gun, but to keep 53 goals this year is a sensational effort. And the leadership be showed I think he should be our next captain and obviously playing bloody injured and targeted and banged up every week uh, Bailey Williams is another huge one so obviously the ruck situation has been dire for a little while with uh, Nick Nat missing about a season and a half and now retiring. It was so important for us to get something out of Williams, Jamison, um, and to a lesser extent Barnett. It was only, only a first year player, but Bailey Williams has hit that 50 game threshold now or he's close to it. And now he has gone from what I would describe maybe as a D grade ruckman last year because he was young and inexperienced to probably C plus B minus now. I think that's a huge win. That's one of the biggest wins out of this year. Jermaine Jones has also found a niche in the back half, obviously putting that position you know, more so last year, he started there and um, his run and carry really stood out in a team that did not offer any run and carry. Um, and, you know, he played forward in round one, kicked a couple of goals. I think we found a pretty good play there. And again, another play that's around that 50 game mark. Jake Waterman before his unfortunate illness, we still don't know what's happening there. He's still not got a contract. I think there's still more to play out there. But, you know, in the, in the first half of the year, he kicked four against GWS and there were multiple other games where he played well. So, like, we're actually getting some support out of that bracket of the list. Um, Luke Edwards is a player that I like, but I wouldn't put him on the same level of development this year. I think he's been up and down and, and with it and probably had a good end to the year. So these players I think are critical, maybe not to our next premiership uh, assault, that's an aggressive word, uh, but probably really important for our next phase for the next three or four years to remaining competitive. Shout out Tim Kelly as well. I think that was his uh, best season as a West Coast Eagle for sure and arguably his best season ever. I, I think you have to weight it against the Geelong season that he had. Yes, he was outstanding. Uh, was he there two years? I think he was, wasn't he? But, you know, playing without the support, he, he was a first year, second year player and playing in a gun midfield. And, you know, anyone would look better in that midfield than they actually are. And the point that I'm making is not that he wasn't good then, but I think he's doing a lot more of his heavy lifting this year. And sure, he has games where he's completely shut out and he's probably going to have games where he's demotivated. But... When Tim Kelly was trying this year, he was absolutely A+. Kicking radar was off a little bit, but he was cracking in and put this team on his back like he did a few times last year. But this year, I think he would be a worthy best and fairest. The other the other positive is, you know, the, the youth situation. We're in a position to um, to actually really get some good youth in this year. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of Hewitt. I think our best young talents in order are probably Hewitt first. Then I think the next best one we have is Ryan Marrick. What an absolute gem. And I do wonder if this year we're going to leave a spot on the list open for a mid-season selection purely because we've had some success with it. Cully, yes, he looks decent. Uh, he is a chance to make it at AFL. But Ryan Marrick, I think, belongs at AFL level and will have a long career. And you just wait three or four pre-seasons when this guy's filled out. He's going to be a hopefully Gunston-like forward. You know, I'm not saying he's as good. He's different. Probably not as you know crafty as around goals and consistent as, as Gunston. But he's a really good field kick, arguably the player that I have the most trust in when he's got the ball in hand up the field now. So I think Hewitt and, and Marek are A-grade talents and I have Jinby and Long just behind them. Brady Hoff as well continued his you know development. He's played 30 games now and he's playing like he's played 75 to be honest. He looks so composed and just wait till he fills out. Bazo I think had a you know a, a quiet year. Obviously he was going through a lot of this at the start of the year. He, he lost his mum and then I think there was some injury issues. I, I can't remember he's specifically on the injury front but overexposed this year. You know, looked good last Last year playing as a kind of a third tall and now this year he's just given too much responsibility and um, I hope it hasn't dented his confidence too much because I think we have a good player there but give him a couple of years in the waffle ideally so you know there's a lot more green shoots this year I think um, anyone suggesting we haven't started our rebuild is just pushing for a narrative that isn't there it's just not true it's ridiculous I'm looking at you Kane Corns and we have pick one and I, I don't know I still don't know what we'll do with it I keep changing my mind based on what I read I do think there's a good chance we trade it but only because I think Melbourne wants him so badly that we might be able to manufacture something half decent for him. And I think what we could potentially achieve is two picks in the top six because I think the top five or six this year in this year's draft is considered the upper echelon. Roman O'Brien and any West Coast 
drafting team have talked about in the past how they they break up the the draft talent into tiers of talent and i think that top five or six if we can secure two picks in that range whether it be you know dan curtin's obviously talked about as well um but you know maybe a dozma or something like that if we can get a juicy offer like that which i think is possible because gold coast might be open to dealing with either melbourne or ourselves we're in a really good position to land some decent talent i'll, I'll talk about the specific draft plans in another video but but yeah it was a tough year as an eagles fan but we kind of ended it on a positive note I think. And uh, like I said in my last week's video, I think uh, Simo sticking around is probably the right move right now for the football club in general. But there you go, guys. That is my season review. Uh, trying to pick apart and find positives in uh, the worst season ever. But uh, like I said, there were more positives than last year. That's probably, let's be honest. I gotta say, uh, I do remember some comments this time last year where um, obviously I'd taken a break from making content and uh, there was multiple criticisms that I had stopped making content because the Eagles suck so bad. So guess what? The Eagles got way worse and I've uploaded every week. Joke's on you. Anyway, guys, thank you for your support. Um, like I said, if you are enjoying the content, if you could subscribe to the channel, that'd be great. And as always, let me know in the comments what you think of uh, the topics that I've discussed in this video. I'm off to Greece now. Better make my flight on time and uh, I will see you on the other side, guys. Take it easy and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.